Hello, welcome back. Let's start the reading a bit. Need uh, this on. So try look. Try look all my clothes. So, but I don't like to do more today. So I have to look all these boxes with all clothes. Did look this. I have to move uh, this somewhere. But yes, I have to put. Uh, can I don't have uh, power in my tongs. Jerusalem during the Second Temple Period. Holy Land model of Jerusalem at the Israel Museum depicts the city of Jerusalem, circa early 1st century CE. Looking west, with the Susa Gate in the foreground wall in front of Temple. Jerusalem during the Second Temple Period describes the history of Jerusalem during the Second Temple Period, from their turn to Zion under Cyrus the Great. C 538 BC, to the siege and destruction the city by Titus during the First Jewish-Roman War, 70 CE. Dot, 1. During this period, which saw the region and city conch hands several times, Jerusalem was the center of religious life for all Jews, even those who lived in the diaspora prayed towards Jerusalem on a daily basis and made pilgrimages during religious festivals. Under Hasmonean and Herodian rule, Jerusalem served as a royal capital and the seat of all major national institutions. Two, in Jerusalem, the Pharisees of Second Temple Judaism developed into the Tanaim and Judaism's post-exilic religious identity as it continues today. Three, and the Hebrew Bible was perhaps canonized, although exactly when this occurred remains disputed. It was also in Jerusalem during the later stages of this period that Christianity was born. The 600 years of the Second Temple period can be divided into several periods, each with its own distinct political and social characteristics. The physical development of the city was greatly affected by the changing characteristics of each era, while at the same time influencing these periods themselves. The city's population was characterized by social stratification, both economic and religious, which grew more re-pronounced over the years. There existed in the city, for example, a clear distinction between a rich and cosmopolitan elite and the wider population wishing less influence in the nation's ways from the outside world. Social strata also encompassed different religious outlooks, each with its different emphasis reliant on the temple priests, while the majority were led by traditional non-priestly families, emphasizing the world of Torah study and the development of law over the formal hierarchy established in the temple. Persian period. At the time of the return to Zion from the Babylonian captivity, Jerusalem was very small and material a poor. 
Its walls were derelict and a modest shrine now stood at the site of Solomon's once grand temple. The city, nevertheless, enjoyed a vibrant and flourishing religious life. It was at this time that first Mishnas were written up and both the Bible and the Halakha began to take their modern form. The same time witnessed the emergence of a dominant priestly class, a cosmopolitan elite receptive to foreign influences. Compared to the late First Temple period, the territory of Jerusalem during the Persian period was significantly smaller, as it had shrunk to its pre 8th century BCE size. The population of the city's inhabited areas the city of David and the Temple Mount was roughly 1,500. In addition to the nearby fields and unwalled settlements, Jerusalem had a population of about 3,000 people. Four, five, political state. Cyrus the Great allows the Jews to return to Zion. Jean Fauke. 1470. During the Babylonian period, the center of Judah had shifted northward to Benjamin. This region, once a part of the Kingdom of Israel, was far more densely populated than Judah itself, and no held both the administrative capital, Mizpah, and the major religious center at Bethel. 6. Mizpah continued as the provincial capital for over a century. The position of Jerusalem before the administration moved back from Mizpah is not clear but from 445 BCE onwards it was once more the main city of Yad, with walls, a temple, the second temple, and other facilities needed to function as a provincial capital, including from 420 BCE, a local mint striking silver coins. Seven. The Persians may have experimented at first with ruling Yehud as a client kingdom under descendants of Jehoiachin, who had kept his royal status even in captivity. 8. Shishvaza. The governor of Yad appointed by Cyrus in 538, was of the Vidic origin, as was his successor, and probable nephew, Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel in turn was succeeded by his second son and then by his son-in-law, all of them hereditary Davidite governors of Yad, a state of affairs that ended only around 500 BCE. 9. This hypothesis that Zerubbabel and his immediate successors represented a restoration of the Davidic kingdom under Persian overlordship cannot be verified, but it would be in keeping with Persian policy in other parts of the Persian Empire, such as Phoenicia. 10. The second and third pillars of the early period of Persian rule in Yad were the institutions of high priest and prophet, preserved in the Hebrew Bible in the histories of Ezra Nehemiah and the books of Chronicles as well as the books of the prophets Zechariah, Haggai and Malachi. But by the mid-5th century BCE the prophets and the Vedic kings had disappeared, leaving only the high priest. 11. The practical result was that of the C. 500 BCE Yad became in practice a theocracy, ruled by a line of hereditary high priests. 12. Alongside the high priest was the Persian governor, apparently usually a local, charged primarily with keeping order and seeing that tribute was paid. He would have been assisted by various officials and a body of scribes, but there is no evidence that a popular assembly existed, and he would have had little discretion over his core duties. 13. Evidence from seals and coins suggests that most, if not all, of the governors of Persian Yad were Jewish, a situation which conforms with the general Persian practice of governing through local leaders. 14. Social and religious state. Judah during the 9th and 8th centuries BC was basically polytheistic, with Yahweh operating as a national god in the same way that surrounding nations each had their own national gods. 15. The exile allowed the worship of Yahweh alone to emerge as the dominant theology of Yad. 16. While the sons of Yahweh of the old pantheon evolved into angels and demons in a process that continued into the Hellenistic age. 15. Possibly the single most important development in the post-exilic period was the promotion and eventual dominance of the idea and practice of Jewish exclusivity, the idea that the Jews, 
meaning followers of the God of Israel and of the law of Moses, were, or should be, a race apart from all others. This was a new idea originating with the party of the Galat, those who returned from the Babylonian exile winking sad smiley 17. Behind the biblical narrative of Nehemiah and Ezra lies the fact that relations with the Samaritans and other neighbors were in fact close and cordial sad smiley 17. Comparison between Ezra and Nehemiah and the books of Chronicles bears this out. Chronicles opens participation in Yahweh worship to all twelve tribes and even to foreigners. But for Ezra and Nehemiah Israel means Judah and Benjamin alone. Plus the holy tribe of Levi. 18. Urban landscape. Persian era Jerusalem was tiny, about 1,500 inhabitants, even as low as 500, according to Smeestimates. 19. It was the only true urban site in Yad, the bulk of the province's population living in small unwalled villages. This picture did not much change throughout the entire Persian period the entire population of the province remaining around 30,000. There is no sign in the archaeological record of massive inwards migration from Babylon. 20. The urban area did not include the Western Hill, containing Jewish, Armenian and Christian quarters of modern Jerusalem, which had been inside the walls before Babylonian destruction. 21. The Bible describes the construction of a wall by Nehemiah. In November, 2007 archaeologist Eilat Mazar announced the discovery of fortifications in Area G on the eastern fringes of the city of David, which she dates to Nehemiah's time winking sad smiley 22. Mazar's findings, however, are disputed by other archaeologists. 23. The Biblical Book of Ezra also describes the construction of a new temple, the Second Temple, by returning exiles from Babylon. Hellenistic period. The conquest by Alexander the Great in 332 BC ushered in the Hellenistic period, which would last until the Maccabean Revolt in 167 BC. Hellenistic Jerusalem was characterized by a growing gap between the Hellenized elites who adopted Greek culture and the city's observant population, a gap that would eventually lead to the Maccabean Revolt. For most of the Hellenistic period, however, Jerusalem was quite a prosperous. It had a measure of autonomy in managing its own affairs and was eventually awarded the status of a polis. Political state. Alexander the Great in the Temple of Jerusalem. Sebastian Okunka, circa 1750. Alexander the Great conquered the region in 332 BC and according to several Jewish traditions even visited Jerusalem. 24. After his death the region known as Seal Syria was contested by the Diadochi and their successor states. Between 301 and 198 BCE the land of Israel was under the rule of Ptolemaic Egypt. But in 198 BCE it passed to the Seleucid Empire. The Ptolemaic dynasty allowed Jews to manage their own affairs, without significant intervention by the Government dot leadership was awarded to the high priest, as is found in the account of Hecatus of Abdra, written around 300 BC and quoted in Diodorus Siculus Bibliotheca Historica for this reason the Jews never have a king, and authority over the people is regularly vested in whichever priest is regarded as superior to his colleagues in wisdom and virtue. Diodorus Siculus, 40.3.13, 25. In 198 BC Antiochus III conquered Jerusalem, aided by the city's Jewish population. At the beginning of Seleucid occupation, Antiochus granted the Jews a charter allowing Jewish autonomy and the return of Jews to Jerusalem, gave certain privileges to the priests, forbade foreigners and impure animals from the temple precinct, and allocated official funds for religious practices in the temple. The acquisition of sacrifices, oil and incense. Dot 26. It was under Seleucid rule, however, that the effects of Hellenization became more pronounced. 
These were the most sharply felt under Antiochus for Epiphanes, who came to power in 175 BC. In 167 BC, with tensions between Hellenized and observant Jews at their peak, Antiochus outlawed Jewish rites and traditions and desecrated the temple, sparking off the Maccabean revolt. Social and religious state. The influence of Hellenistic culture was already felt during Ptolemaic rule, a trend which only increased with the Seleucid conquest. Hellenic customs